Demon Souls is in no small part responsible for From Software's success as a large-scale game studio. Despite being published by three different companies in five different regions, and having essentially no promotional marketing other than word of mouth, Demon Souls defined the term Souls-like, which is now used to refer to an entire subgenre of action RPGs, and was able to kickstart a multi-million dollar game series for 7th and 8th generation consoles. Of course, like all revolutionary titles, Demon Souls is not perfect, and so this video is dedicated to the 10 most iconic ways players were able to exploit the game's coding to their benefit. I'll be going from most well-known glitches to the least well-known, and I think even the most dedicated fans of the game may be surprised by what they don't know is possible in this title. But first, I should note that some of these glitches are only possible on specific region copies of the game, or on specific patches, and intentionally glitching any game carries the risk of damaging your save data, so as the old adage goes, please do not try this at home. If you know anything about Demon Souls, you probably know about this exploit. In the first stage of the Shrine of Storms, at the top of the stairs where the copper key is found, it's possible to roll across a gap and land on top of the stone wall separating the first half of the area from the ladder. Once on top, a player could drop down from the wall to pick up the regenerator's ring, and follow the path along the cliff to find a crystal lizard and reach the boss fog. This exploit allowed for most of the stage to be skipped, including the Vanguard mini-boss and the dangerous tunnels below the shrine. In fact, after rolling over the wall, the only dangerous enemy encountered would be the skeleton just before the boss fog, which could easily be skipped. Although this exploit is extremely well known and only saves a few minutes of gameplay, a Demon Souls veteran will likely make use of this technique on multiple characters to either get early access to the generator's ring or simply reach the adjudicator boss a little sooner than intended. Due to its simple execution and practical uses, the Shrine of Storm sequence break definitely deserves a spot on this list, despite being essentially common knowledge in the Souls community at this point. Next on the list is perhaps an equally practical glitch, but for entirely different reasons. And I know some of you, simply from reading the title, already know where I'm going with this. This exploit was discovered soon after the game's release, and relates to the only item in the game that can be used to cast both miracles and sorcery, the Talisman of Beasts. Requiring 18 magic and 18 faith to utilize fully, this item was intended to be used by magic faith hybrid builds, and had its scaling split CC across both stats. Of course, just like all weapons in Demon Souls, if the player attempts to use it without meeting the stat requirements, they will notice a significant reduction in damage output, making the weapon essentially useless until they spend the souls to level up and meet the minimum 1818 threshold. However, some players quickly learn that the stat requirements of the Talisman of Beasts might be better off unmet, especially the requirement of 18 magic. This all relates to a single spell, Cursed Weapon. This is a simple buff to the damage output of a weapon it's cast on, but unlike other weapon buffs, Curse Weapon is not affected by scaling and always grants a static 50% boost to any single weapon's physical damage. Now, casting Cursed Weapon also has a negative effect, as it slowly drains the player's health over the duration of the spell, specifically 1% of the player's maximum HP per second. And so here's the irony. The game reduces the damage output of any spell cast by a player who does not meet the requirements of the Talisman of Beasts, but since the damage buff of Cursed Weapon is a static 50%, the only damage that gets reduced is the dynamic, gradual HP drain. The mechanic meant to punish the player for not reaching proper stat requirements actually rewards them in this scenario, cutting the 1% loss of max HP per second down to a measly 1 HP loss per second, which can be offset completely by the Regenerator's Ring. This exploit has become so well known, most players now cast Cursed Weapon exclusively with a Talisman of Beasts they do not meet the stat requirements for and the Demon Souls community has even coined the term Cracked to refer to a talisman for which the requirements are intentionally left unmet. This is probably the last exploit on the list that I would consider to be common knowledge for Demon Souls veterans 
When you were a new player completing the game for the first time, you likely struggled with the man-eaters boss of the Tower of Latria, so I suppose it's only natural that this was the first boss for which an exploit was discovered. The man-eaters pushed new players to their breaking points. Not only was this the first boss in the Souls series to have two enemies attacking the player at once, it was also the first boss that could buff itself, and the first boss room which held the threat of falling as an additional concern. Now, anyone that knows anything about this series can tell you that fog gates serve as the entrance point for boss fights and prevent the player from leaving until the fight is over. These gates serve just as any other wall would, blocking projectiles and holding the player back. Most of the fog gates in the game serve their function perfectly, except for the one that serves as the entrance to the man-eater's boss room. By standing all the way to the right or left side, and turning your character at a slight angle while wielding a bow, the tip of the arrow will clip through the fog gate and allow the shot to pass through while the player remains safely on the outside. Using this strategy, it's possible to snipe the first manager through the fog gate and completely defeat it before the fight even begins, although this process is extremely time consuming. Then of course, the remaining one would have to be defeated after passing through the fog. What's more, if the player died to the second man-eater or fell off the platform, both bosses would respawn and the long arduous process of defeating the first one would have to be performed over again. This isn't a glitch I've ever used personally, because I've always felt that if I could defeat one man-eater, I could usually defeat them both without much additional difficulty, so it does make me wonder why so many people took the time to kill the boss this way when the game was new. They must have been after that needle of eternal agony. Yeah, I'm sure that was it. A lot of people find Demon Souls to be more difficult than other Souls games, and this difficulty I think can be encapsulated in the single mechanic of having half HP while in soul form. Yes, this can be remedied somewhat by using the cling ring, but that forces the player to give up a ring slot as well. The only way to truly fix the problem and return to body form is to defeat a boss, defeat another player as an invading phantom, or use a stone of ephemeral eyes. Having that additional health can make all the difference in a particularly daunting segment of the game, and so if a particular stage or boss is giving you trouble, it isn't uncommon to burn through a few of these stones making attempts at full health. Ephemeral eye stones aren't exactly one of the most common items in the game, and so when an exploit was discovered that allowed for them to be obtained indefinitely, the community latched onto it. This glitch takes place in the second part of the Shrine of Storms, after Patches pushes the player down into the pit below the Reaper. He's done the same thing with St. Urbane, the game's miracle tutor, and by defeating the NPC Black Phantom that guards the exit of the pit, St. Urbane will be able to return to the Nexus and teach the player miracles. Every NPC Black Phantom drops an ephemeral eye stone when they're defeated, but they're also non-respawning enemies. However, this particular Black Phantom seems to have his spawn trigger tied to St. Urbane in some way. This Phantom will always spawn if St. Urbane has not been rescued. Therefore, if the player kills St. Urbane here in the pit before he's ever given a chance to leave, the Black Phantom NPC that guards him will respawn over and over for the rest of the playthrough and drop an ephemeral eye stone each time he is killed. This is especially convenient since the Phantom is located so close to the Reaper just above. Anyone farming the Reaper for Souls could easily take a short detour to the floor below to collect an eye stone as well, although faith builds that needed St. Urbane would likely choose to skip this exploit. You know, since you'd have to go yurt the Silent Chief on his ass. After collecting the mausoleum key from Ostrava, the chapel in Boletaria 1 could be open for an opportunity to fight Old King Doran, an NPC infamous for his high health and heavy damage. When approaching Doran for the first time, he would introduce himself and challenge the player to a duel. If the player were to backstab Doran during this dialogue, however, he wouldn't become aggressive and the first line of his dialogue would be reset. This backstab chain could be continued over and over, resetting the Old King's dialogue each time it happens. Because he doesn't realize he's being attacked, he will never make an attempt to heal or fight back. After inflicting enough damage, his dialogue will switch to something more ominous, as though he's preparing to fight. But there isn't anything to worry about because the dialogue resets the first line again right afterward. This glitch makes Doran an easy kill, 
allowing his armor, the Eternal Warrior's Ring, and Demon Brand to be collected much more easily than normal. However, if this dialogue is ever given the chance to complete on its own, or any damage is inflicted on Doran that is not a backstab, the cycle will be broken, and it will be impossible to perform the glitch again until the next playthrough. This exploit was often used by invaders, who quickly earned the reputation as cheaters, as there was no real way to counter it in online PvP. Known as spell swapping, this exploit was performed by executing a specific series of inputs and manipulates the animation of casting certain spells. The most common use of this exploit was in switching from Fire Spray to Fire Storm, as it allowed the latter to be cast while maintaining full movement speed. To perform the exploit, the player would face forward and press R1 or L1 to cast the first spell, depending on which hand was equipped with the catalyst. And just as the animation began, press up on the d-pad to switch to the next spell, push down on the analog stick so that the character spins 180 degrees, and then press R1 or L1 again, all before the original spell was cast. It sounds complicated, but once you got the hang of it, spell swapping could be performed all too reliably. The glitch is too easy to abuse, and as you can tell from the footage, the result is essentially unstoppable. I don't worry too much about teaching people how to spell swap this late in Demon's Souls life cycle because PvP is now uncommon on the title. But even so, if you are able to find a match, please do not use this glitch in online PvP. You will earn the reputation as a cheater, and your opponent will pull out the scraping spear and break your shit. I'm sure most of you realize item duplication is possible in Demon's Souls, but you may not know how to perform it specifically. There are actually two ways to accomplish this. The first can only be used to duplicate weapons and equipment, and the second can only be used to duplicate consumables. In order to duplicate weapons, a player would need the assistance of a friend. To start off, they would get themselves summoned into the friend's world and bring the item they want to duplicate along with them. After the greetings, they would open their inventory, find the item, and drop it on the ground. Now, without closing the inventory screen, Press the home button, navigate to account management on the PS3 menu, and press triangle to sign out of the PSN. This kicks you back to the Demon's Souls title screen, and when the character was reloaded, they would still be in possession of the item in question. This works because Demon's Souls refreshes the list of items in the inventory once the pause menu is closed, but items dropped in the other player's worlds are added to their game immediately. By dropping the item but not allowing the inventory to update, Two copies of the same item are made, and the hosting player could then drop their copy back to the original owner, leaving the summoned phantom with one more than they originally had. What's even more surprising, this glitch can still be performed in all versions of the game to this day. The way to duplicate consumables is a little more complicated, but doesn't require the assistance of another player. Stockpile Thomas instead served as the role of host, but it only works if he isn't holding any of the item being duplicated when the glitch is started. To start, the player would equip the Nexial Binding on the item hotbar, and switch to it so that it could be activated with Square. The next step is speaking to Boldwin the Blacksmith, and selecting Buy Item. After picking something to make the Purchase Under These Conditions window appear, the player would walk away from Boldwin so that the window closed automatically, then press Square to activate the Nexial Binding. When prompted with Forfeit All Souls in Return, they would press Start to close the window. Finally. Speaking to Thomas, the player would deposit all of the item they wish to duplicate. As soon as the items were deposited, the teleporting animation of the Nexial Binding would begin, and so they would rapidly press circle to close the windows and stop the teleportation. Now, upon checking the inventory, they would have one more copy of the item they duplicated, and Thomas would have 1,023. This works especially well with large consumable souls, and could allow someone to quickly create a level 120 character for multiplayer or simply allow them to skip farming the Reaper in 4-2. Duplicating consumable items really only affects your individual character, so I suppose there isn't anything wrong with executing it for some easy souls, but I would be lying if I said there wasn't a stigma associated with those who use it.
This is a glitch that is quite similar to the item duplication glitches, but centers around manipulating bloodstains instead of the game's netcode or menus. It can only be performed on an unpatched version of the game, so either a first edition copy of the Japanese or Asian version. This is likely the reason why it isn't as well known as it could have been, and the reason why it was patched so quickly will become obvious soon enough. A player needed two characters holding a decent amount of souls to start the glitch. Using the first character, they would die in the Nexus and retrieve the Bloodstain. Then switch to the second character and do the same thing, die and retrieve the souls on the Bloodstain. The next step would be to switch back to the first character and die again, but this time switch to the second character before recovering the lost souls. A copy of the first character's bloodstain would be found in the second character's game, which could be claimed to get a copy of all the souls held on the alternate character. What's more, by switching back to the first character, the bloodstain would still be there to be retrieved, meaning the souls owned by character 1 were copied to character 2 without being lost on character 1. This process can be completed over and over, and even in reverse order, which of course would result in a greater profit each time it was performed since the souls held were essentially being doubled each time. This is the fastest method of obtaining souls ever discovered in demons, and so it's no wonder the game was patched by default on all North American, European, and Australian copies of the game. We can thank the speedrunning community for the discovery of this glitch, which essentially allows the entire stage of Stonefang Tunnel 1 to be skipped, teleporting the player directly to the boss at the end. After warping to 2-1, some of the stage must be completed in order to set up an opportunity to go out of bounds. Run past the falling rocks, through the room with the wolves, and up the stairs until reaching the second floor. From this platform, it's possible to see the lever-operated gate, and the fat minister standing on the wooden platform on the opposite side of the room. The glitch begins by rolling off of these stairs that lead up to this platform in order to land just outside the boundaries of the stage. From here, the player would drop down to the platform below and hug the rightmost wall, walking straight ahead until meeting the corner and the stone wall at the back. Facing into the corner, and then turning 180 degrees, the player must walk straight out ahead until dropping through the floor. If the character begins falling, they will die and be sent back to the beginning of 2-1. And so if that happens, the player must quickly reload the profile to reset the character's position to the out-of-bounds platform and try again. If the glitch works as intended, the character will land on the exterior of the minecart tunnel from Stonefang Tunnel 2. By turning around, you should recognize the room with the crystal lizard as being the first room after the armored spider. After landing safely on top of this tunnel, the game believes that the player is located in 2-2, and so if you were to die at this point, you will be resurrected at the second archstone of Stonefang Tunnel, which just so happens to be behind the armored spider. From this position, the boss cannot reach the player, and so you can chip away at her tail for an easy kill. The reward for executing one of the most monumental exploits in Demon Souls today. Finally, at number 1, this glitch is not the most difficult to execute, the most impressive to watch, or even the most rewarding. The Fat Minister glitch is at number 1 for sheer obscurity. This has to be the most unknown glitch in Demon's Souls simply for the fact that those who have been lucky enough to trigger it don't fully understand what's happening. There's a surprising lack of information surrounding this bug. But using forum posts and my own research, here's what I've been able to learn about this glitch. When traveling to 1-3 for the first time, you'll trigger a cutscene of a fat minister closing the gate on one of his soldiers and forcing the player to take the long detour through the stage to reach the opposite side. Before the cutscene is triggered, an actual fat minister enemy rests atop the stairs, which like any enemy, has a health bar and can be locked onto. Of course, if the player gets too close or the minister is hit with a ranged attack, the cutscene will play immediately before the minister is given an opportunity to be killed. 
What you may not know is that if the minister is poisoned using Poison Cloud or plagued with Death Cloud, he will remain stationary as his HP slowly depletes. Once the minister reaches 1 HP, he can still be poisoned or plagued, but he will never lose that last point of HP. This is a failsafe included in the game to make sure the minister is still alive in order for the cutscene to be triggered. Although this is as far as we can take the glitch with this minister in particular, this is not the only minister in 1-3 tied to a cutscene. After progressing through the stage as normal and reaching the last stretch before the boss fog, there is a second fat minister which behaves the same way. He's an enemy only until the player approaches, at which point a cutscene plays, and the enemy model is then teleported into the boss room to be stabbed by the penetrator a bit later. If you've played the game, you know what I mean. And so now we get to the glitch. The player must watch the cutscene of the minister running into the boss fog and then die to the enemies. Once the player revives and the stage is reset, they must summon a player phantom into their world. I've only tested this with a friendly blue phantom, but I've also heard reports of this glitch occurring after an invader arrives. Something about the additional player joining the world confuses the game and resets the position of the fat minister to before the cutscene is triggered. Of course, the cutscene has already been played and it can't be triggered again, which leaves this fat minister non-aggressive, frozen in place, and with an eternally regenerating 1 HP, waiting for a cutscene which will never actually play. The fat ministers are one of the most annoying enemies in the game, and once the glitch has been triggered, you and your summon phantom may enact revenge for all Demon Souls players. Jokes aside, there isn't a lot you can do with an immortal fat minister, and attacking forever gets old pretty quickly. But if you have Soul Sucker and a ton of spice, you can make use of the undying enemy. Soul Sucker treats each grab as a kill, and so you will receive the souls for killing him each time you use it, despite the fact that the minister is clearly still standing. There are much faster ways of glitching the game for souls, but there is something to be said for stealing them all from the gut of a fat minister as he stands there motionless. Once the player enters the boss fog and the penetrator cutscene plays, the glitch minister will disappear, gone forever until the next playthrough. That concludes my countdown of the most interesting exploits in Demon Souls, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this far. This is one of the longest videos I've ever made, but I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. Also want to thank Rex Ray and Framework of the Windmills for giving me an instrumental to use as the backing track. This is just one of the songs found on their upcoming album Stay Golden, which launches later this year, so if you like hip-hop, make sure not to miss it. I'm also curious to hear what you guys think about these exploits. How many of these did you know about beforehand, or even, how many have you utilized yourself? Let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.